Hi, welcome to the final tutorial using the Move, Roll, and Turn functions in Alice. In this last lesson, we'll take a look at the Turn method, probably the trickiest of the three to use. However, if you've mastered the other two, then using Turn won't be a problem. Just like with Roll, the trickiest part is figuring out where the object has its line of axis. Once you understand where they are, using it should be just a matter of trial and error to perfect your action. Turn has two parts to it. Let's change the girl's opacity to 40% so we can see the three lines we talked about in the last video. This time we're concerned with the red and green lines, so let's start looking at the green line first. If we use the turn method on the girl, it will give us four options, left, right, forwards, and backwards. The green line is used when we want to turn our objects left and right. Imagine you had a green line stuck through you from the top of your head and out through the bottom of your feet. Well, apart from probably hurting quite a bit, it would also mean that when you turn, you would spin around while staying on the same spot. That's exactly what happens to our girl. But remember, all of our objects are broken into smaller parts, and they all have the three lines of axis. Okay, we'll do the same thing to her right leg. Now let's watch what happens. Let's do the same thing, but for her right arm, and see what happens. Strange, it didn't twist like with the leg. Let's have a look at the axis to give ourselves a better idea of what's going on. Well, if you look here, you'll see that the green axis Instead of going straight down from the waist to the foot like it did for her leg, it comes out from the shoulder and keeps going out. Imagine if you had your arms by your side and somebody, who obviously doesn't like you, stuck a green line into your shoulder at a right angle to your arm. Now if your arm spins around the line, it's like you're making windmills with them. A bit confusing, I know, but with practice you can quickly figure out what a turn will do, either by looking for the green line or by trial and error. Okay, let's make our girl raise her arm like she wants to shake her hand. Let's turn her right arm left, quarter of a revolution. Let's click play and see what happens. Now let's make her look like she wants to give us a high five by raising her right forearm a quarter of a revolution as well. Let's see how that looks. It's almost right. Now we need to turn her hand to face us. So let's turn that a quarter to the left as well. Ah, that's not quite what we wanted. So it's time to take a look at that red axis. By the power of deduction, many of you may have figured out that it controls the forwards and backwards controls of the turn method. If we turn the raccoon to 40% opacity, we'll see that the red line goes sideways through his body, in one hip and out the other. In a playground, if you stood behind a red bar that was at waist height, held on and tipped forward over it, you would flip around that line. So let's do that to Mr. Raccoon. So we don't have to keep watching the girl turn on the spot, we're going to disable a couple of methods. Right click on the method and select disable. Let's see how that looks. As we saw with the blue line for the man in one of our earlier videos, the girl's red line is by her feet, so she will spin through the ground. This is not the case with her hand. In this close-up picture of her hand, you'll see that the red line makes her hand spin on the wrist. That is what we need to make her complete her high five pose. So let's turn her hand forward a quarter of a revolution.
Bingo. Still, it would look much better in a do-together box. So let's finish it off so that it looks nice and smooth. So there you have it, the turn, roll, and move functions. They'll take some time playing with to get used to. Remember, you can either look at the axis or just use trial and error. Say you want to make your girl flap her arms like she's trying to fly. Try turning her arm right. Nope, that's not it. Let's try rolling them left. Looks better, but not quite it. How about we try rolling it right? There you go. It really is about practice. The more you do it, the better you get at guessing which will be the correct movement. Be patient, and again remember, Every part of the body has its own set of axes, and they may not be what you expect. So persevere, and you'll figure it out. Let's put them in a do-together block. And there we go. Looks like she's trying to flap her arms and fly. Next time, we'll take a look at the loop, and how it can save you lots of time. Thanks for watching.